But I've heard this, you know, well, faith moves God. It doesn't. Faith doesn't move God. You understand? What faith does, faith allows God to move legally in your life. If God's not moving in your life, it's because he can't do it legally. He would violate one of his own principles. And the minute he does that, he alters what goes out of his mouth. And when he does that, he puts himself in the position of a liar, which makes the devil his father. So if God isn't helping you, and I can tell you right now, he's helping you even when you don't know he's helping you. But if you don't see God helping you, it's not because he doesn't care. And it's not because he caused the problem. But it's because we have not been able to release faith in him that allows him to do what he wants to do legally. One of those things can be just prayer or the lack of it. So our faith in him has to be in a way that his word is true, and then that becomes the word of our testimony. And whenever we start to give that word of testimony, that releases him to do in our life legally what he said he wants to do. This is why it's so important that you have the word of your testimony to be solid and unchangeable. Why? Because if you change, then at that point you become double-minded and you won't receive anything from God. Doesn't mean he hadn't given it, just means you won't receive it. Why? Because one minute you're, oh yeah, and the next minute you're, no, put that down, I don't have it. So the idea is that your faith in him. Now, the Bible says that his angels are mighty and they excel in strength, and they hearken to the voice of the word of God. Notice it doesn't say they hearken to the word of God. If they hearken to the word of God, they'd just be out doing whatever it said. They don't hearken to the word of God. They hearken to the voice of the word of God. You're that voice. By your words, when you agree with the word of God, angels are released to do the word of God in your life, and God is able to do legally what he wants to do in your life. So don't blame God. <clears throat> Agree with him. See? Well, I don't know why God won't heal me. I've studied healing. I know he... I just, listen, a lot of people die knowing, but not believing and not doing the word of God. And by not saying what he said, which releases him to work in your life. So there's a lot of these things that we're going to be hitting on here in the near future. But I, it's not enough. Listen, I, I love the fact that you come here. I love the fact that you trust me enough that you will come here and allow me to minister to you. But my goal is to get you where you don't need me. That you know God, that you can trust God, that, that you know the facts and that you agree with him. And that the word of your testimony is, be it unto me, even according to your word. And that that's how you live. That's my goal. Say, I'm longing for the time when our healing line time is nothing but testimonies. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Whenever I actually have to say, if there be any sick among us, <laughs> not knowing that there's some, but saying, if there be. Why? Oh, there's nobody sick. No hands went up. No cards passed out. All right, well then, let's get some testimonies. Right. And, and what? okay, let's go another level. Let's get past the testimony of, I was sick this week and God healed me. Let's get to the testimony of, I want you to meet my friend. He was sick and I got him healed and I brought him to church. Amen. That's how revival happens. 